Gathering is similar to easing in that I'm going to be making this piece smaller to fit this one. Now, this smaller piece is about three inches shorter than this. You can gather up as little or as much as you want, or as much as the fabric will allow. So I'll be able to get this eight inch piece to fit into this five inch piece. So with a long stitch length of five millimeters per stitch, I'm gonna do a gathering stitch right along the seam line, like at the 15 line or the 5 8 line. No back tacks and I'm not gonna cut my thread short. So you can gather up with just one line of sewing, but some people prefer to do two lines. It is good to have two lines because sometimes if you're gathering up a big area and you're pulling on these threads, if one thread breaks, you still have the second thread. It also having two lines, or even some people recommend three lines, having two or three lines makes your little gathers straight up and down instead of going on an angle. Now that I've got my two gathering stitches with that long stitch length, I'm going to take the two top threads. I can do the two bottom threads or the two bobbin threads as long as I'm consistent. I don't want to switch back and forth. So I'm going to grab the two top threads and I'm not really pulling the thread. I'm more just holding the thread in place and shuffling the fabric along the thread. If you think of it as pulling the thread, you'll end up breaking that thread. Good. So you see how that gathers it up nicely. And then if it's a long section, I can go to the other side. But if I started with the two top threads on that side, I need to use the two top threads on this side. If I switch over to do the bobbin threads on this side, it will jam up in the middle. So just be consistent in which the threads you choose. Top or bottom doesn't matter as long as you do the same on both sides. Good. So that's quite pretty, isn't it? Pull it up just as much as you need to to fit the piece that it's going into. So I'll pin my ends together there and pin my ends together here. And then if it's too big, I'll just pull those same two threads that I worked with before to just make that fit. Now, I don't want flat sections and then really bunchy sections. I want this gathering to be even right from start to finish. So to be able to push some of that gathering back against the pin, I need to secure these threads. So what I can do is just pull on those bobbin threads, pull out those loops, and tie these off together. Then I can push back some of those gathers right towards that pin. And my goal is to make this nice and even, to evenly distribute those gathers. No flat spots and no really bunchy spots. Good. I could do the same at this end, tie off the threads together so that I can have that gathering go nicely up to that pin. Okay. Alrighty. Then when you have it evenly distributed, now you can do a lot of pinning. I would say, depending on the garment or this section of the garment, you might want to use pins every inch or so, or even more. So a lot of pinning like that. And then now you can connect those seams just with your regular stitch length. And my goal here would be to sew in between those lines. And I can even use a pin to help me push around those gathers to make them look really even. If I see them going off at an angle, I'm gonna lift up and get them organized.
the gathering stitch has done its job and I definitely don't want it to show. So now I can pull that stitch out, just the one that shows. The other one's embedded in the seam allowance, so it doesn't matter. When you're pressing a gathered section on a garment like this, you don't want to press the gathers flat. You want to just use the tip of your iron to press the seam allowance. And then you can poke your, the point of your iron into the gathers like that. If I press the seam allowance going out toward the gathers, it becomes much more puffy. If the seam allowance goes toward the non-gathered piece, the gathers lay more flat.